Hello, I'm Deacon Frederick Bartels. What's the big deal with Lent and fasting and abstaining from meat? Is it important? Are we obligated to do these things as Catholics? To answer those questions, let's begin with our gospel for today. The disciples of John approached Jesus and said, Why do we and the Pharisees fast much, but your disciples do not fast? Jesus answered them, can the wedding guests mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast. Those days have come. Our Lord Jesus has ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father. Those days have come. Of course, Christ is invisibly present to us still today. He's present at Mass and the Assembly to two or three who are gathered together in prayer in his name. He's present in the Eucharist. His body, blood, soul, and divinity is truly and substantially and wholly present under the signs of bread and wine in the Eucharist. So our Lord is, is present to us. He's present to those who are in a personal relationship with him. Nevertheless, this is the season for penance because it's Lent. This is the season for fasting and abstaining from meat. So what's fasting about? Why should we fast? Well, first of all, there's a long history of fasting in the people of God. We can read about that in the Old Testament when the people of Israel, to atone for their sins, would put ashes on themselves and wear sackcloth and they would fast. And this was done as a way of seeking forgiveness from God for their sins, a way of atoning for sins. We can read about fasting in the New Testament. The early church fasted. And we can read about our Lord who went into the desert, led there by the Spirit, for 40 days and 40 nights and ate nothing. He fasted and he was hungry, we are told. People often ask, could Jesus have really done that? Is it possible to not eat anything for 40 days and 40 nights? Wouldn't that kill a person? The answer is yes, Jesus really did do that. And yes, it really is possible. People today fast for longer periods of time and eat nothing. Take only water and perhaps some minerals. Jesus really did enter the desert and fast for 40 days and 40 nights. And during Lent, we go with him into the desert. We enter into that kind of spirituality where we're completing acts of penance. We're fasting and abstaining from meat. We're trying more ardently to live a life of holiness. We're trying to be more faithful. We're praying more often. We're engaging in the other Lenten disciplines of almsgiving and prayer, right? Including fasting. So during Lent, we go into the desert with Christ. And fasting is very beneficial spiritually and physically. But as Christians, we primarily fast for the spiritual benefits. What does fasting do for us? Well, if you want to have a powerful experience of the presence of God during prayer, fasting is the road. Fast and watch the graces flow. In fasting, we also identify with the suffering Christ. And fasting, as I said, is a way of atoning for our sins. That doesn't mean that by, by penance we earn our way to heaven or through penance we receive forgiveness as if we earn forgiveness by acts of penance. No, we receive forgiveness by seeking that forgiveness from our Lord Jesus and attending the sacrament of confession. But nevertheless, penance is an excellent means of drawing closer to our Lord. And fasting is a type of penance. So what about the church law on fasting and abstaining from meat during Lent? The church law states that we must fast and abstain from meat on Ash Wednesday and Good Friday. And we abstain from meat on all other Fridays during Lent, unless a solemnity falls on a Friday and then we're no longer required to abstain. Pope Paul VI, in his Apostolic Exhortation Penitimini, defined fasting as this, one full meal a day and taking food two other times a day, perhaps once in the morning and once in the evening. So people articulate this as having a full meal and two lesser meals. Some people will say, you can have a, a full meal, and the two lesser meals cannot add up to a full meal. Actually, the documents of the church do not say that. So it's just stated as a full meal and taking food two other times a day. 
those who have reached age 18 up through 59 to the age of 60, right, are um, required to fast unless they have a serious reason, such as a medical reason or some other serious reason for not doing so. So again, we fast and abstain from meat on Ash Wednesday, Good Friday. Um, what about abstaining from meat? What's that all about? Those who are 14 years old and older are required by the law of the church to abstain from meat on all Fridays during Lent. And this is flesh meat. In other words, the meat of land animals such as pork, beef, chicken, pheasant. You can have the meat of fish. This is uh, not flesh meat according to the law of the church. You can have milk and eggs and cheese. Meat broths like chicken broth and beef broth are permitted, but they're not recommended because they have a meat-like taste. So we would fast from meat, or excuse me, abstain from meat on Ash Wednesday, Good Friday, and all other Fridays during Lent. By the way, when you're fasting on Ash Wednesday and Good Friday, you can have coffee, juice, milk, tea. These do not break the fast, and they don't count as uh, taking food two other times a day. So those are allowed. And yes, these are laws of the church binding on the consciences of the faithful. So what does that mean? That means that as Catholics, we have to abide by the laws of the church because we're citizens of the church, just as we must abide by the laws of, of our nation and our state. If we don't, there's consequences, right? We're obligated to abide by the laws of the church. The church is gifted with judicial power in our lives through the giving of the keys and the powers of binding and loosing given to first Peter and then to the other apostles. So yes, we're bound by these laws. If we intentionally and knowingly reject these laws and just decide, well, I'm just going to eat meat anyway on Fridays and I'm not going to fast, I just don't want to, we would be held responsible before God for uh, intentionally rejecting his laws that flow to us through the church. Now, ultimately, we don't want to think of these as impositions. These are actually gifts. And the reason I say that is because this is Holy Mother Church with the power of the keys and the powers of binding and loosing urging her children to live lives in such a way to draw closer to Christ. She's giving us tools, really, tools that will lead us into deeper communion with our Lord Jesus. She's inviting us in free and loving obedience to gift ourselves to Christ, to engage in voluntary acts of suffering, penance, to atone for our sins, and to grow closer to him during this penitential season in preparation for what? in preparation for Easter, the celebration of our Lord's resurrection. So these are gifts, and they're ultimately about eternal life. So we should all embrace them fully. We should joyfully fast and abstain from flesh meat during Lent. Live the faith. <laughs>